Hi everyone, I'm Peter from MIT. Today I'm going to talk about our research on shape and pose recovery using tactile sensing and only one finger and during a planar pushing context. Uh, the motivation of this work is uh, by observing humans' amazing capability. Um, imagine that you are given a bag filled with objects. You can easily use your hand to find out what's inside it using just your hand touching. In fact, psychologists have made an experiment. They gave out 100 common objects to the participants. They are asked to uh, cover their eyes and figure out what's put in, in front of them. And it turns out that most of the recognition can be done in only five seconds. And also they report that the global shape of the object is the key feature that they do the recognition. So as roboticists, we are wondering how can a robot acquire this kind of um, ability? And inspired by the human research, since shape is very important, so we wonder how robot can use tactile to find the shape of the object. So one caveat is that touching is uh, potentially intrusive. That means when you are doing tactile exploration, you are easily move the object around. Here are several prior work on tactile sensing on objects. First is to get, take a look at the shape estimation. In this scenario, they assume that the object is fixed on the table. So that means when they use the finger to poke around, the object is fixed so that they can accumulate the contact points to find out the shape. Here, the pose estimation. In pose estimation, they are interested in tracking the pose of the object during the robot is manipulating with the object. So they assume that the shape of the object is known. Here, the shape and pose estimation is the closest to our work. So there are two work. First is the Mo and Erdman. They use two fingers and they are uh, limited to um, a convex shape objects. They are rolling it around and uh, find the shape and also pose of the object. And Shrub, they also use two fingers. However, they fix the object along the axis of the rotational axis. So here is our proposed problem. In this scenario, we have a movable object on the table. And we want to find its 2D shape only by touching and only using one finger. So the way that we can use only one finger is that we exploit the knowledge of pushing mechanics. So the problem input is the contact points and the contact normals while you are doing the exploration. And the problem output is the shape and poses of the object during every time step. Here's an example of the collected data. So we use a simulator and we uh, implement a, a contour following policy to follow the contour of the object. And we also record the contact points and contact normals when we are doing the exploration. So in this video, you are seeing a circular probe that is pushing this uh, rectangular object around. And this solid line represents the contact points that uh, it's uh, measured. And also the contact normals are represented as the errors. After following the objects for four rounds, here you can find the massive data, like the left hand side. There are lots of contact points and lots of contact normals. So what we want to take this as input and want to output as the shape of the object and also the poses of the object. Here's a small observation. For each time step, we are actually collecting very limited observation, uh, which means we are only collecting one contact point and normal, but we are also pushing the objects around. So one of the key contributions in this paper is that we show, although the, it's limited, but we show that it's actually feasible to solve. So our approach is using uh, least square optimization. For this optimization, the variables are the shape and poses of, of the objects. 
The shape is uh, defined as the uh, control points along the boundary of the object. And the poses are the x, y, theta uh, in every time steps. So we want the variable to satisfy several constraints. They are represented as cost functions. There are three cost functions. First is measurement cost, second is motion cost, and third is shape prior cost, which I'll explain in the <coughs> following slides. First, measurement cost. For a me measurement cost, we want to say that the contact points is always lying on the boundary of the object. So in implementation, we are penalizing the distance between these contact points and the boundary of the object for every time step. So for motion cost, before talking about the cost, we want to mention uh, the motion model. What the motion model is doing is we use physics analysis to find out given the, the pusher motion and the uh, pose of the object at time t, we want to predict the pose of the object for t plus 1. So for the cost is we penalizing the difference between this motion model and the estimated poses. So the motion model we adopt is by Kevin Lynch uh, proposing 1992. There are three assumptions to make this uh, uh, prediction feasible and uh, very complete. Pretty quick. So first is the quasi-static pushing, and second is we know the object, the pressure distribution between the object and the uh, support surface. And also we approximate the limit surface. So finally is the shape prior cost. So with this cost, we prefer that the control points to be equal distance of, um, along the object boundary. So we are penalizing the difference between the main distance and the individual distance between the consecutive control points. For these two examples, we prefer the upper one, not the lower one. Because for the upper one, we have similar resolution for the object at different sides. So with the above optimization setup, we are going to do the optimization with MATLAB. So remember we have this kind of input, lots of contact points and not normals. On the right hand side, the dots represent the contact points and register to the first frame of the object. And the solid line represents the estimation of the object shape, also at the first frame. And the dashed line, like this, is the rectangle uh, ground truth of the block. So as the optimizations go on, you will see the dots will converge to the rectangular shape. And also, the solid line will uh, also converge to the shape because of the measurement cost. Here I will show the recovery results. In the video, the solid line also represents the sh estimated shape and poses. And the dashed line represents the ground truth uh, shape and pose. As you can see, most of the time, the estimation and the ground truth matches pretty well. However, when it goes around the corner, it suffers some, from some jerky motion. That is because we subsample the data uh, to make the optimization more tractable. However, in the corner cases, the, the motion prediction is more sensitive to the uh, pusher motion. So to summarize, uh, this paper we have three uh, contributions. First, we formulate a new problem of uh, shape and post reconstruction using tactile sensing and with only one finger. And we apply a least square optimization to solve this problem. And we show that this problem is actually solvable. And uh, although the measurement information is pretty limited. For future work, we want to collect real data to uh, validate our, our algorithm. As I mentioned in the motion model slide, our motion model relies on three assumptions. 
And whether those assumptions uh, explain the real world scenario well uh, is a question that we want to investigate. And second, we want to do a develop online or real time grid reconstruction so that when the when the robot is exploring the object, it knows where it has more uncertainty and explore those regions more. Thank you for listening. Any suggestions or questions are welcome. Questions, yes. Hi. Uh, very interesting. In your simulation, the shape of the object is a rectangle, yeah. and the motion object is planar motion, planar rotation. So I wonder whether this method is suitable for the other, the other shapes and also the 3D motions, even 6D motion. Yeah, that's a good question. So for for first thing, uh, for different shape, um, for our representation is uh, uh, with control points. I think that in theory it applies to most of the case. However, if something like the circular shape like this. It may like drift off the sides because it cannot, it doesn't know where it comes back to the same point. Now for 3D cases, you probably can extend the motion model further. Like for example, you include the toppling. Like if you in 3D, you can easily topple objects. So in that case, you might be able to extend to 3D. I, I was wondering, do you have a hidden assumption here that your objects are rigid? Oh, yeah. Because if they're at all compressible, I mean, that, when I put my hand in a paper bag, I probably was squeezing things to, to see yeah. how much they So, can for push. that kind of scenario, you probably need to add uh, more uncertainty on, on the measurement model. Like, it's squeezing it for or, or it might even be essentially another coordinate sort of yeah. shape and compressibility. Yeah, that's true. <laughs>
depends on size. Shape is really big, big so more uh, fragrant sampling is um, getting more broader, but small size is one more need sampling. Right? Yes. yes. So how do you think about that in the real so sampling um, times frequency? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I agree, I agree that if your object's relatively small, then you'll probably need more resolution to um, yeah, so variable uh, contact points is what we are also need to investigate more. Uh, we haven't done it 